ounce to two or three different ones and each one pretty much uh, I gave them the numbers of the sperm analysis and they looked at the sheet and it, they pretty much said oh yeah there's no chance. I see the situation of people being told there's no hope about five or ten times a week. But I wasn't ready to give up the hope that there were still other options for us and so I wasn't ready to stop. I think, so I think the response that's mixed with doubt, hesitation, and some anxiety, and then also excitement. But you, you, there's a lot of anxiety with that first meeting, because is, is this really true? Can he really do anything? Am I going to hang my hopes up on this again and get him knocked down? So I try to be very accurate and technical and numbers, so that they can work with numbers, not just, oh, we'll get you pregnant. Brian, he has zero sperm in the ejaculate. Engineering helped. So we, 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 we planned how much we could push the sperm count up medically, also a little innovative. Um, but they're probably looking at IVF, and we saved him procedures on his testicle and hits the testosterone level for life that could happen from that. So <laughs> why can we succeed here where other doctors didn't is, a, is probably a matter of discipline, expertise, and technology. I just have nothing but respect for you. Um, you made something that seems so impossible possible for us, and I don't know how to thank you, and I know that you do this for tons of couples. My Nobel Prize is to have a kid named after me. It's happened about <laughs> a half a dozen, maybe a dozen times, and it is the ultimate honor. They, they have Lots of pictures with bow ties because they used to wear them with their baby wearing bow tie, <laughs> which is close to the Nobel Prize. Okay.